Okay, uh, now let's please welcome our next presenter, Dr. Ruzulaini Bintigoni, Associate Professor at Department of Electrical and Automation Faculty of Engineering Technology, University College Tati, to present the material of Solar Farm Challenge and Mitigation Strategies. Uh, so, Dr. Zlaini Bintigoni, are you here now? Yes, can you hear my voice? Okay, I read your uh, voice very clearly. So, please, Dr. Zlaini, to share the presentation slide. <laughs> Okay, um, all right. Okay, can is that uh, can you see my slide? Is that clear? Yes, is see it very clearly, doctor. Okay. So, can, uh, can I start the presentation? Uh, the time is yours, Doctor. Okay, so uh, thanks. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum to the honorable guests and the participants of the fourth international conference on electronics, biomedical engineering, and health informatics, Ajibehi, 2023. I would like to thanks for this conference as well as for inviting me as the invited speaker for these uh, conferences. So um, I am Ruzlaini um, from the Department of Electrical and Automation, Faculty of Engineering Technology, University College, Tati. So I will be sharing about the solar farm challenges and mitigation strategies, a case study of Epic Solar Syndrome Berhad. So um, I, I was appointed as the research consultant at the Epic Solar Syndrome Berhad. So all this um, data that I will be sharing next is based on the analysis we have made along the way, uh, the journey with this uh, Epic Solar uh, Farm Syndrome Berhad. So before I move into um, a specification of this uh, solar farm, I would like to bring forward um, the Malaysia um, targeting for this uh, solar energy roadmap, roadmap for uh, powering a sustainable future. So as according to the Malaysia Renewable Energy Roadmap, uh, my RER, it is uh, commissioned to support further decarbonization of the electricity sector in Malaysia through the 2035 milestones. And then uh, this my RER is expected to drive a reduction in greenhouse gas emission in the power sector to support Malaysia in meeting its um, NDC or nationally determined contribution 2030 target of uh, 45 reductions in GHG emission intensity per unit of GDP in 2030 compared to the 2005 level and further reductions of uh, 60% in 2035. So these are the uh, location, uh, the area for the solar PV in Malaysia, which is um, accounted up to 269 gigawatt, gigawatt in total. So we are blessed here in Malaysia with ab abandoned solar resources, ready, uh, readily exploitable for uh, power generation due to our one year round solar radiation. So as you can see here, um, this amount of 269 uh, gigawatt total of solar PV in Malaysia is located in um, Peninsula Malaysia, the north area of Peninsula Malaysia, which is, which is uh, accounted to 137.5 gigawatt here. And then uh, here in um, uh, East Malaysia, we have uh, in Sabah, amounted up to 99.4 gigawatt. And in Sarawak, we have uh, 32.1 gigawatt. So all these three 
a big area location of the solar PV in Malaysia, uh, contributing to this 269 gigawatt, uh, gigawatt total of uh, solar PV in Malaysia. So as I said, this research is based on the um, case study in Epic Solar Syndrome Berhad. As you can see in the video here, these are the farm. Um, it is incorporated in 2016. Uh, Epic Solar Syndrome Berhad specializes in solar photovoltaic technology for Malaysia's East Coast region. So basically, Malaysia's East Coast region is um, uh, my location right now. It's in uh, Terengganu, specifically in Kemaman, Terengganu. It's within five minutes less driving from our university, University College Tati, to this Epic Solar uh, farm. Um, and then uh, the plan was developed on a 28 hectare site in Teluk Kalung industrial area and employ the use of fully sustainable green technologies. And um, it produced uh, 18.5 megawatts of power generated uh, by this plant and directly transferred to uh, Tanaga National Berhad, the national owned uh, body of uh, uh, Malaysia electricity uh, through the national grid system. I would like to bring a point to this um, area from the video as you can see here um the surrounded as you can see you you can see from here the factories in which these are the location of the um uh, epic solar i will brought you to this attention due to the challenges that i'm going to share uh, later on why it's contribute to the, that challenges that i will be sharing later Okay, uh, and these are the challenge faced. Um, first, we are going to look into the uh, yearly power yields in Epic Solar, uh, the, the decreasing pattern. And second, the, the challenge phase, specifically here in due to the overheating of solar panels and the soiling um, contributing to the industrial surrounding, which leads to this challenge faced uh, by uh, this epic solar. Again, um, to bring all of you uh, to the location of the epic solar, uh, this picture is taken from the Google map. As you can see here, this is epic solar, Syndrome Berhad, and it is surrounded by the Teluk Kalung industrial area in which the nature of this um, area is uh, oil and gas. And we have here the Eastern Steel. Uh, which obviously um, the, com the company, uh, the industrial area related to steel. So these are the major factors that we have to look and consider carefully as this the main contribution to the types of soiling. Later, we are going to discuss, okay, due to this uh, location, the surrounding of this uh, epic solar location. Okay, so first we will look into the yearly power yield trend um, from 2019 to 2022. Um, as we can see here, um, this power is uh, measured in uh, the, the total amount in megawatt hour. And uh, the red color representing uh, the year of 2019. And as we can see, the trend of this power yield is slightly higher on the first year. Uh, or for the power yields. And um, for the second year, uh, 2020, which is present with the light blue color, the pattern is slightly decreased from the first year. So, um, and we move to the third year, which is uh, present by the gray color, the obvious decreasing pattern can be seen as well here from um, monthly or from 2021. And as we can see as well, the similar uh, decrease pattern on 2022 as well, uh, shown for the yearly power yield uh, of this Epic Solar. And as we can see here, the representation of the average point, um, as we can see, it is obviously the first year of 2019 showing um, the higher um, result the higher output power yield and um, it slightly decreased starting from September to December 
2019. Um, this is expected due to um from normally starting from September to December, it is monsoon season here in East Coast of Malaysia, in Tronganu especially, around uh, end of September and continuously until December, and sometimes it may lead a bring up to the next year, January and February. So it is expected to have a decreased pattern of uh, power yield uh, at the end of the year, every year. And then for the uh, 2022, the pattern shown is quite similar with the 2019, except for the uh, slightly pattern of uh, power producing from the previous year. And as we've seen from the 2021 and 2022, the pattern is similar. Both of the year, the pattern is similar with uh, significant numbers of uh, decreasing pattern shown uh, for these two years. So um, uh, we, will, we will look into this uh, consistently uh, decreasing pattern uh, from the first year of this data recorded until uh, uh, 2022. So this one is the uh, um, yearly power yield versus the irradiance uh, for the four years as well. So um, just to show that, um, yes, um, theoretically, uh, practically as well, the irradiance will impact uh, the amount of the power uh, produced by a solar farm, solar panel to be specific. And as we can see here, the summarization of the year from 2019, um, the primary axis uh, representing the output power in megawatt hour and the secondary axis representing the irradiance in watt uh, per meter squared. So um, the pattern of this uh, yearly output power in radiant is uh, proportional uh, both sides and we can see um, the decreased pattern proven by decreased pattern of the power yield as well. So these are the uh, projection of uh, for the uh, four years of um, estimated output power versus the targeted output power. Um, so uh, the first one is the uh, this number is compared based on the real uh, output power yield for these uh, four years versus the targeted powers in which um, Epic Solar targeted of uh, two point seven eight megawatt hour for uh, the production. So if we can, as you can see here from 2019, uh, we can see um, a few months of the power output yield achieved above this targeted output power. And uh, the rest of it is uh, non-achievable and under this uh, targeted output power. And starting from uh, 2020, uh, only one month uh, can be seen as the um the months that are achieving the target of uh, 2.78 uh, megawatt per hour and the rest is uh, below this number same goes to uh, 2021 and 2022 as you can see here uh, in fact it just not only does not meet the targeted power of 2.78 megawatt but in fact it's far uh, below decreasing from the targeting power. So um, as I said before, this um, decreasing number is consistently showing a decreasing pattern from 2019 up to the 2022. Okay, um, so next here is the solar panel degradation rate. So um, a solar panel degradation rate is basically the comparison of the output power, uh, rated power, compared to the previous year. Um, so as we can see here, uh, it is um, uh, 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 mounted in megawatt hour. So on the first year, the total amount is 31.7 megawatt hour. And uh, for 2020, um, this amount reduced to 29.92 megawatt hour, uh, in which it shows the pattern of 5.6% degradation rate from the previous year. And move on to the next year of 2021, the, the third year, we also see a decreasing pattern with the amount of 27.67 uh, megawatt output power, which um, showing a much more decreasing number pattern 
of 7.5% as compared to uh, 2020 this year. And similar goes to 2022 with the amount of uh, 26.34 uh, megawatt hour, which is uh, which recorded uh, the decrease, uh, the degradation rate of 4.8% compared to um, 2021. So um, for your information, uh, the typical degradation rate for most solar power panel is uh, between 0.5% and 1% per year. However, these are based on the um, experiment on the test done under the standard test testing condition. This factor obviously will be um, um, influenced by the surrounding factors of the solar panel location as well. So that is why we see different, a uh, huge different patterns uh, gain uh, from this um, epic solar um, farm. Okay, now we are going to look into details of the challenges faced by this um, um, solar panel, solar PV. So basically, these the, the challenges I will be sharing is um, normal, is general, it's the common problem shared with all the uh, solar panel uh, farm out there, not only in Malaysia. But uh, what uh, I, would, I would like to share and bring into your attention is um, the surrounding of this epic solar, which contributes to a quite ch a challenging factors for us to really look into in order to improvise the output power yield for this uh, epic solar. So um, uh, what is the first um, challenges is overheating challenge. So basically, what is overheating challenge? Um, the solar panel eff efficiency is affected negatively by temperature increases. We are now talking about the temperature on the solar PV. So um, the higher the ambient temperature will contribute to the higher to um, the solar PV temperature. So this um, overheating uh, due to the high temperature of the, on the solar panel PV will obviously influenced and contributed to the amount of power um, generated from the solar farm. So why why it is happened? Uh, the photovoltaic or, uh, or the PV modules are tested at a temperature of 25 degree under the standard testing condition. And again, as I mentioned, depending on their installed location, the heat uh, can reduce the output efficiency by 10 to 25%. So 25% um, is the standard um, degrees. Uh, more than that, it will show these uh, degrading um, results, uh, the degrading efficiency of this uh, output solar uh, power yield. So uh, as the temperature of the solar panel increases, its output current increases exponentially. So while the voltage output is reduced uh, linearly. So these are the data specification um, based on the PV solar used in EPIC solar. So it used these types of solar, JAP 72SO1, specifically under this um, uh, number under this um, series. So um, I will bring you into this later. First, I would like to share about the temperature coefficients. Uh, what is the temperature coefficients? That it will tell us the efficiency decreases in temperature above 25 degree and increases uh, in temperature lower than 25 degree. So what does it mean? Um, for every uh, one, degree Celsius above the 25 degree will contribute to the decrease of the efficiency of the solar panel. And um, of course, with the lower temperature below than 25 degrees, it will contribute to the increased efficiency based on the one degree um, Celsius below this 25 degree. So as you can see here, the temperature coefficient for these panels, for every uh, one degree Celsius above 25 degree, will decrease the efficiency um, amount of 0.410%. Uh, 
um, of the uh, solar PV efficiency. Okay, so while I'm sharing this with you, we are going to look later after this, um, that impacts as well. Okay, so these are the um, um, sensor, uh, the temperature recorded at the um, solar PV, uh, at Epic Solar Farm, um, monthly basis starting from 2019 until 2022. So um, this uh, amount is based on the temperature um, recorded as in Celsius for the solar PV. All right. So uh, as you can see here from 2019, um, uh, overall, as overall uh, temperature, we look more, uh, we rarely see the temperature that is the 25 degree and below. So all the years from January to uh, December for 2019 recorded the temperature of more than 25 a degree Celsius with the highest temperature average recorded on June, uh, 47 um, degrees Celsius. Same goes to 2020. So um, the, the temperature pattern is almost similar as shown with on the 2019, um, 29, and there is no um, PV solar temperature recorded on 25 degree or below than that. And then same goes to 2021. Um, it shows slightly um, decreased of the temperature recorded, um, but still it's still up to more than 25 degree with the only average recorded on 25 degree is uh, in December. Right, so it is expected due to, as I said, normally most of the time December is the heavily rain um, month of the year here in Kemaman Trungganu, and in 2022, so it's showing um, most of the temperature recorded on the PV solar a few months, showing the average recorded below 20, 25, uh, 20 degree. 23 degree on March as well, uh, on May 25 degrees, and August 23 degrees, October 25 and December 23 degree. So these are the um, temperature recorded on the PV solar, on um, Epic Solar. So um, what are the mitigation strategy for this overheating mitigation? Um, generally, normally, normal practice is using the cooling systems uh, by implementation of cooling system to regulate the panel temperature, to lower down um, the panel temperature. And second is the panel orientation in which uh, the adjustment of the panel orientation to optimize the performance. Um, since this is still an ongoing research uh, with um, Epic Solar, we haven't um, practiced of or introduced any of these two um, in Epic Solar Farm, but we are looking forward from the data um, studied, from the data gained, we are going to look into the most effective um, overheating mitigation with the optimal cost involved, uh, since this will um, involve of the area a huge area of 28 um, hectare of uh, the solar farm. So we are going to run a, a, a few testing to find the most efficient method to for this uh, overheating uh, mitigation strategies. Uh, so the second challenge faced is uh, the soiling challenge. So uh, what is the soiling? Soiling is basically the uh, dust accumulation on the solar panel. So this accumulation will um, hardly impact the power output power yields uh, by the solar farm. So there are various types of soiling like um, dust, various kinds of industry pollution, sulfuric acid particulates, birds droppings, uh, falling leaf, agricultural feed dust, and the growth of algae, moss, fungi, lichen or biofilms of bacteria. This um, dust listed here is the most common um, dust 
um, accumulated on the PV solar. But I will. I want to bring your attention to uh, different types of soiling will be based on the location of the solar farm, will be based on the geogra geographical area, will be based on the type of industrial it is uh, surround its surrounding. So um, these are the difference that we found later. Uh, the types of dust exist on this epic solar uh, uh, farm. So uh, what are the impacts on the soiling uh, on solar panels? So the accumulated materials will block or scatter the incident lights, which leads to a loss in power output. So these are also the major factors contributing to the um, decreasing factors of uh, output power yield for this solar farm. All right. So um, we have um, come out with this uh, sort of uh, soiling analyzer. Uh, uh, basically, our focus is uh, the first one is to detect the type of soiling exist on the solar farm um, area in Epic Solar. The second is basically to measure the dust, the, the, um, the level of dust uh, on this um, um, a soiling accumulation on the solar PV. So um, the interesting part is that um, we, um, due to this, uh, I've, I've mentioned earlier, uh, due to its surrounding, uh, surrounded by Eastern Steel area and as well as this uh, oil and gas industry, but our focus is more on this uh, Eastern Steel area, which um, produced the steel particle, obviously. And we have to understand that the very uh, tiny steel can be uh, airborne. It, it's a type of airborne particles. All right. So um, we come up with um, additional features of this soiling analyzer in which it can um, detect the metal existence on the solar panels. And um, we have detected most of this area of the solar panels was soiled with metal particles. Okay. It's very hard to find. Um, any of the panels that is not um, accumulated by these metal particles. But um, not surprisingly, uh, not surprisingly, the solar panel, which is near, close to the eastern seal, uh, since we have a very um, broad area of the solar farm, but the area that is close to the eastern seal um, recorded the, the whole uh, um, surface of the solar PV is um, accumulated, is covered with these metal particles. And it's hardly to find the, the, metal, the, the surface area that is clean from these um, uh, particles. So um, why I'm stressing on this matter is that um, the way of the cleaning method for the solar panel is there are various methods of cleaning, but here in uh, Epic Solar, they use this um, solar cleaning with water, water-based uh, cleaning. So, um, which which um, uh, the the component involved besides the water is the brush to brush up the the panels. But we have to bear in mind uh, the type of brush shouldn't um, um, scratch the, the the surface materials of the solar panels. In which this scratching will obviously impact on the power production of this uh, solar PV. So um, these are the things that uh, we have to look seriously into since the water cleaning uh, couldn't remove these uh, metal particles. Okay, so this is what we've uh, discovered this year, uh, I think middle of this year. Um, so um, we are going to look into as well how, what are the optimum strategy to overcome these metal particle issues on um, ep uh, on PV solar, specifically on epic solar um, air farm. So um, what are the um, normal practice of this soiling mitigation? Uh, the first one is based on cleaning. Um, obviously, cleaning the frequent cleaning will lead into a good um, result. Uh, and the second method is coating. As of now, we haven't applied the coating techniques on the the um, so solar PV, we are only focusing on the cleaning schedule in which in the latter section, I will share on um, the experiment we run based on for this cleaning 
technique using the water-based cleaning technique. Okay, so um, this ex experiment, as, as I mentioned, as of now, um, Epic Solar practiced the cleaning based on water cleaning method. So uh, we run um, the first experiment is um, they bought this special cleaning agent for solar PV. So this experiment is about comparing the output power generated with different types of cleaning technique. So the group consists of the first group is using the cleaning agent RMC, the the brand, uh, the the name or the brand of the cleaning agent, and second is weekly clean cleaning. And the third group is the control cleaning or the, the, the control cleaning, which is the solar PV that is not being watched uh, to see the impacts of uh, whether it's good to use the cleaning agent or no. So these are the image of the solar PV uh, taken for the cleaning agent, use the, cleaning, the use of the cleaning agent. And the weekly wash, bear in mind, the weekly wash is the cleaning method that is that has not been using any um, cleaning agent. It just required a frequent cleaning. And the third one is the control group of solar PV in which it is not washed. Uh, you can clearly see the dust covering on top of the surface and its color is slightly uh, white color, dusty color like that due to this uh, not cleaning, um, um, uh, not cleaning of the surface. So these are the output power generated for different cleaning methods. Uh, this uh, experiment, this data was taken uh, on February, uh, on uh, 2022 uh, because they decided to use this and they provide us with the data so that so that we can come up with the analysis whether or not the usage of a uh, cleaning agent will help to um, reduce and to gain the more, the better output power. So as we can see, the February is the first month they started the cleaning. The February is the first month. And as you can see here, um, the blue color, uh, uh, February, uh, in which it uh, consists of four weeks, um, the second, the primary axis is the power, and the secondary axis is the irradiance. Just to show, just for this um, indicator for comparison uh, of the data, and um, the blue color represents the use of the cleaning agent. Um, the orange color is the weekly wash, and the gray is the control um, solar PV, which is not washed. So. Um, for the first month of the usage, the first weeks, so um, this uh, first month or the, the few weeks earlier, we made an assumption because it's just cleaning. So we expect uh, no difference in result due to its starting of the cleaning process. So as we can see here, um, the result recorded for the not wash and the, using the cleaning agent is slightly Similar, uh, with the four week of February, we can see the weekly wash um, showing a better results compared to the use of the cleaning agent. And we move on to this, the, the month of March, um, similar as well. So by this assumption, we have passed the first month of the starting using the agent of cleaning on February. So uh, as well, we can see the recorded uh, result showing that there is no much difference between um, the using of the cleaning agent and the frequently wash practice. Um, and similar goes to the third uh, month in which uh, we have gone through the cleaning process, this experiment for the third month. And uh, as we can see here on the first week of the April, the weekly wash showing the most um, re better result compared to the use of agent and the rest of the month, even if like the, the third week of the April, the, uh, the using of the cleaning agent is showing a slightly better result. But the conclusion we made here is there is no much different um, with the using of the cleaning agent or the weekly wash. To say that uh, frequ frequently washing is um, better uh, and we don't really need to rely on the use of the cleaning agent to uh, for to come out to to produce a, a better output uh, yield from the solar uh, panel. So this as well as the comparison of using the 
um, cleaning agent and um, frequently watch. As you can see here, it's not showing any much different uh, from the, with the usage of the cleaning agent or uh, with the frequently cleaning of the solar PV. So um, this as well is the, the, the same experiment, just comparing in terms of efficiency. It clearly can be shown that it's showing not much different in terms of efficiency with the frequent washing is the key towards um, gaining a better, uh, clearer um, soiling uh, accumulation of the solar PV. So uh, in conclusion, um, solar energy has emerged as a formidable force in pursuing a cleaner and more sustainable future. So however, we cannot run from um, the, the, the challenge uh, that I've mentioned before. Um, solar farm is um, the, the backbone of the solar energy infrastructure. So we have to look into the challenges faced, the overheating and the soiling from various sources. And um, as well, we are looking forward to explore other methods uh, to solve these um, unsolved issues that I've mentioned, the two un unsolved issues, by looking forward to the more um, efficient technique with the development of the technologies, uh, research around the world, we are going to consider the usage of other technology as well to match with our geographical area in order for us to come out with, with a better solution for overcoming the challenges in this um, epic solar farm. So um, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Ruzlaini Bintigoni, for your great presentation. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, now we've come to the question and answer session. We glad receive your question, going to select three first question. So this is uh, the first question come from Mrs. Sari Lutvia from a chat room. The question is, a uh, solar farm has challenges and mitigation. Challenge the production and disposal of solar panels can be resource intensive and may pose environmental challenge, including pollution and waste. Uh, what's the impact to environmental, Dr. Ruzlaini? Okay, due to the, uh, the material that is used uh, for the the development, the building of the solar panel, it does has an impact. So there are many ways uh, used in um, disposing this uh, PV solar uh, in order not to to um, impact the environment and uh, the, some of the ways they're using these uh, recycling techniques of this solar PV. Uh, but I cannot answer your, your question details as I'm not focusing into this, this disposal of the solar PV. So I just can uh, answer in, in that sense of the way of disposal of this item uh, has been studied in way not to uh, impact the environmental. And one of the way is the recycling of the solar PV. I hope I am answering question. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zulaini, for answering the question. Is it uh, good for Mrs. Sari for uh, answer the question? Uh, and the second one, maybe all the participants can open up your microphone to talk uh, directly with Dr. Zulaini or write on a chat room. Okay, thank you for your detail answer, Dr. Ruzalaini from Mrs. Sari Lutvia. Okay, uh, maybe I have one question, Dr. Ruzalaini. Uh, uh, now I live in Surabaya. Did you ever come to Indonesia, especially in Surabaya? Um, I've went to Indonesia, Bandung, not Surabaya as of oh, now. Okay, Bandung is... Uh, is uh, sorry, West Java and Surabaya is East Java, capital city, uh, in one of capital city in Indonesia. Uh, Surabaya has uh, some uh, very highly uh, weather. It's up to forty two degrees Celsius nowadays. Uh, maybe today, gitu ya. So, uh, what uh, your suggestion for our residential in Surabaya to Maybe a simple 
make a solar panel in our home maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> In Malaysia, we have this initiative um, in which it is um, led, led by Tenaga National Berhad. I mentioned previously the body they own by government in terms of the electricity production in which they have this incentive provided for every home uh, installing these solar panels and the the power yields will directly um, uh, transfer to the uh, TNB and then we are going to have this um, um, uh, cost decreasing in in the the payment of the the fees of this electricity usage. So I think um, if as of now um, in Surabaya there is no rules stating directly for the use of solar panel, I think why not we can uh, come out with um, individual solar panel installing with I think it's not involved a major um, major installation since it can be a few uh, things or a few components that can be used to directly convert the solar panels to the electricity and focusing on um, not the overall uh, the overall devices or appliances in houses but only a certain amount of um, appliances in which uh, with that usage it can minimize the usage of your um, electricity bills monthly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good uh, answer, uh, Dr. Zlaini. And uh, I see a JA Solar is already in mass product, Dr. Zlaini. So basically the JA Solar, we are not producing the solar panel. That solar panel, uh, the Epic Solar, bought all the solar panel from this JA company. It is China company. So that is the specification used um, the solar PV specification used by the Epic Solar and it is manufactured uh, by China, in China, obviously. Okay, but maybe a resident in Malaysia can buy that GA solar and install it in our house, eh? Maybe. Yeah, it... we have we have so many houses right now. If you come if you come here in Kamaman, you can see so many res residential with the solar panel on top of their housing. So it's not kind of rare here in Kemaman especially to see this um, solar panel on top of the residential okay so this is uh, so everyone that's the answer from Dr. Zlaini uh, so we are now in the climate change so renewable energy is one of the solution maybe to reduce the climate change doctor is it oh, good okay uh, maybe any other question so uh, we run out of time. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zlaini Bintigoni for answering several questions. Uh, so uh, this is uh, kindly present an, a certificate as uh, invited speaker. Thank you for your time and contribution. <laughs>